Hello, this is Scott. So welcome to my YouTube series on advanced analytics and data science. So today um, we're talking about hands-on statistica. It's just, it, we have a whole series going. In fact, today's number 10. Um, so I hope you've joined me previously, but if you have, I, I normally do these in one or two flavors. The first flavor is I talk about a topic in the industry um, that data science can help you with, or the second flavor is essentially a hands-on demonstration on how to do something functionally within a platform, say R, Statistica, Spotfire, Python, something like that. So today is going to be hands-on and it's going to be um, with Statistica. So I'm covering the ability to do uh, transformations and standardizations of uh, variables within the platform. And then next time, we'll, I'm going to switch from Statistica to R for a while. So I'm going to talk about um, some time series components in, in R. Um, I've completed a half dozen previous, and I'm going to get back to R for a little while um, in the series. If you have comments or questions, suggestions, please contact me at one of these email addresses. And with that, I'll go straight to Statistica. So I'm going to use a, a data set that's available in the platform. It's this 30 predictors of yield. And um, so what we have here is uh, yield data with 30 different inputs, essentially. And I want to show you how to um, first standardize these columns, right? So what I'm doing, and I, I find this under the, if you look up here, the data tab, and then there's actually a standardized node right here. And it's what you would think of if you are a statistician and you want to create z-scores. So this computation is basically x minus mu over sigma, right? So it's um, the individual value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation for the set. So the variables in the list here, um, I have, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dependent continuous variables, and let me just show you that. If I if I look at the variables themselves, the variable selection I have is this yield uh, column number one is my dependent continuous variable, and then I have 30 variables here that were in this data set, um, and they're they're continuous predictors. All right. Then when I go, I can. Um, the dependent continuous variable is that yield value. This, um, the predictors for continuous is going to be all variables in the list, all the 30 predictors that I was talking about. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I have some other options if I had categorical um, values and I can do some subsetting and everything. But to run this, um, you can see I started off with values in the 9, 10, range um, here, variable 10 up into the 100 range here in the middle of the data set. And then when I compute these z-scores, essentially these z-statistics, I get a standard normal distribution around zero. Um, so zero to plus or minus three sigma, you know, 99% uh, of the value should fall in, in there. All right, so the second one I'm going to talk about is the transformation. Transformation is by formula, so it's right here. Um, you know, it's user defined transformation of variables. Um, and so let me show you an example of that. What I'm doing here, I can create any logic or how many ever variables that I want within this, and I can rewrite an existing column as well. What I opted to do here is to show you how to create a categorical variable based upon a continuous variable. Remember that yield data? It's, um, well, let me just show it to you. Uh, that yield data here is, this is the actual transform, but the, the um, oh, yeah, let me show you this. So the yield data runs, you know, from about, uh, point 0.7, point, the high point sixes to a little less than one. And um, so I'm going to create a an indicator variable, and it's anything that's greater than 
0.72, I'm going to say that's a high yield or not, let's just say not a low yield is the way I'm going to define it. So low yield is anything where the column, the value in the column is 0.7, less than 0.72. So this is just similar to Excel, it's equal to yes, otherwise it's equal to no. The only difference in Excel is this is IIF. I don't think that matches. I think uh, Excel is just an if statement. But anyway, you can create all kinds of formulas like this. There's a, lots of functions built within, you know, Statistica. Pretty much anything you want to do: conditional, timestamps, distributions. Of course, Excel has many, many too. So, um, you know, similar functionality. Uh, the advantage here is we can do it right within the workflow. Um, and add something as we move along if we if we need it. So that's transformations. And then lastly is this Box Cox transformation. So if you know anything about time series, um, what we have in time series data is the uh, oftentimes we need to transform our Y variable, the, the variable that we're trying to predict. So essentially, um, you know, the, there, there are assumptions in, in time series, uh, stationarity. Uh, essentially, if the series increases, you do not want the variance of the series to increase across the x-axis. If you were to look at just a simple xy, um, you know, there, there are power transformations, but one of the most common ones is what's called a box cox transformation to handle this. Um, but it is an iterative method, so you can do it by um, by hand, where you try different uh, lambda values, um, which is the parameter um, in the Box Cox transformation. Um, but Statistica will will basically do this algorithm for you, and so it, it's going to converge um, on a value. Um, for the different parameter and then use that to transform the series. So from a user standpoint, it's really pretty simple. You just you basically, we, we defined that yield was gonna be our, um, our Y variable here, our, our dependent variable. So that's, that's pretty much it. I'm using this, the default settings um, within the platform and then it's just easy enough to run. And then when I look at the output there, um, I have the original data, the yield data, and then I have this, this yield that was, that was transformed. I also can look at the different um, statistics. So the Lambda that uh, Statistica computed was actually 1.822, um, and you can see the shift, the new mean, um, of the transform series, the standard deviation of the transform series, and then even a, a confidence interval. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to conclude this last piece um, for a while of Statistica. And again, I hope you join me for uh, next time, which is going to be the, the time series components. So we'll be looking at, at time series within um, R and specifically we'll be looking at you know things like seasonal components um trend uh you know uh well i encourage you what i encourage you to do is watch r01 to r06 because uh, we kind of set this up um so anyway i look forward to seeing you then